David Wilson, what is up, my man? Hey, everybody. Looking forward to coming to Regina big time. Yeah, we're, yeah. Regina Regina is big time looking forward to you coming at it. Thank you. That's what I like to hear. So, yeah, I'm uh, right now I'm sitting in a, uh, in a very fine hotel room at the uh, Saskatoon Inn. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple of days ago, I was in Swift Current, uh, working with the Composite High School there. Nice. Work with those awesome kids. And just done uh, one day at the Saskatchewan Music Conference. I'll do another one tomorrow. And then I'm going to be on the road up to, uh, up, up, to the, up to the top of the triangle. So you are, you are coming to Regina tomorrow, is that right? Correct. Yes, nice. I'm going to show up at your doorstep tomorrow. You probably didn't know that, but you're welcome. I know it now. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, then I'm getting ready. I'll be getting uh, having a nap and getting ready to uh, teach on Sunday. Excellent. Well, I guess we should back up a little bit, everybody, because yeah, I guess we should. you may not know who I am, who this handsome gentleman is. Uh, I'd like to know. Yeah. So here it goes. Uh, everybody, my name is Colin Hall. Uh, I work and own uh, Bodhi Tree Yoga in Regina, Saskatchewan, and uh, it is a pretty magical place, and we bring in really excellent teachers from around the world to teach there, to share their stuff. Favorite yoga studio in Canada. Get out. I'm just making that up. It's true. Get right out. It's true. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. Feather in my little cap. Well, those two people that are running it are pretty amazing. Well, the other person that's running it, she's not She's not with us tonight. Her name's Sarah Garden. Uh, and I'm sure most of you, I don't even need to introduce Sarah Garden. You know who Sarah Garden is. <laughs> she's famous. Yeah. Um, so I am lucky enough to have a quick conversation. You're lucky enough to join us uh, with David Wilson. David is from Edmonton, Alberta. Um, now, feel free to jump in if I get this introduction wrong. But oh, you, you just go. You go. Uh, David is a uh, vocal therapist, a, a breathing coach and teacher. He's a choir director. He's a conductor. Um, teaches at uh, Grant McEwen College in Edmonton. He's a yoga yep. teacher. He's, <clears throat> he's a lot yeah. of things. You know, all the things, as the kids say these days. Yeah. But, you know, actually, if, if, since this is going to get on YouTube, I'd better, I'd better make one little edit. edit. Uh, Grant McEwen University now. Oh, I see. I did yeah. not know that. This is relatively new. Well, welcome to the big time. Yeah. You know what we call that? We call that the big show. Oh, the big sh- The big shoe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I'll tell you, I mean, yes, all the things for sure. But a lot of people do all the things. You know what a lot of people don't do, though, is integrate all the things. Take all the things that they do, bring them together, and find how it fits. And that is what you do. That's the reason we love you. That's the reason why we bring you back here so much. Because I'm always blown away at how well breath, voice, and movement interact with one another. And... I think most people know that on an intuitive level, Uh, but I don't think most people are as close to it as you are. So um, any thoughts on like on that integration, like how maybe back up way back for me. How did you come to this? Like what what happened? Yeah, well, it it comes from personal experience, which is uh, which I think is really what glues these these uh, three. uh Manners of healing, therapies, whatever way, uh, ways of living, whatever you want to call it. Um, I mean, I was uh, I was a singer right out of the womb. You said go back, so here we go. <laughs> uh, but I, I loved singing. I sang myself to sleep every night. It was great. Hmm. Um, it's just what I did. It was who I was. Um, and <laughs> then I took a degree in singing and promptly couldn't sing. Uh, and I'm sure <laughs> many of us have had, uh, had, had stories similar. But uh, yeah, it felt uh, after my first uh, degree, uh, um, I uh, I couldn't sing. Like it hmm. felt like razor blades were going across my throat huh. uh, whenever I sang for more than ten, fifteen seconds. So I knew something was was wrong. But no one in uh, in my hometown of Calgary, yeehaw, uh, could <laughs> help at that time. 
And so I went into conducting and uh, uh, conducted choirs, conducted orchestras, and everything was fine, but I wasn't happy. I didn't know I wasn't happy, but uh, uh, lots of anxiety, lots of uh, just not being happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, while I was conducting a a Renaissance group, a uh, lovely young lady came around, as they do, and I started dating her, and at some point she said, Buddy, you really need to take yoga. Uh, <laughs> this was a lot of compliment. I was just thinking, how many times has that conversation happened? Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, guys can relate. So at that time, I I got this image of this uh, brown guy in a, in a loincloth sort of floating about a foot and a half off the ground. Mm-hmm. But because she was who she was... If she'd said, tar and feather yourself and jump off the Calgary Tower, I probably would have done it. <laughs> so uh, I went to a yoga class. And uh, my very first yoga class, I had this massive emotional release. And uh, my second yoga class, as I was rolling around on the floor, I felt my voice came come back just for a minute. Huh. And this big 40-foot light bulb went on inside my head. It's tension. And it had never occurred to me because no voice teacher uh, huh. could could get at what was going on, at least at that time. So uh, so I was into yoga like a pig in slop. Does that work? Yeah. 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 Uh, I was going to mix my metaphors and I didn't want to. <laughs> so, yeah, and I, I started the teacher training program about six months that I, earlier than I was supposed to, because you're supposed to take two years at that I am, time. I am familiar time. with that story. Yes, yeah. exactly. I'm in it. So so I started doing this teacher training, and at that time, the uh, Yoga Center of Calgary was uh, two years, 1,800 hours in the studio, and 1,800 at home. So when you do six hours of yoga a day for two years, you're going to change whether you're ready or not. Uh, let me just <clears throat> back up one sec. Eighteen hundred yeah. hours, hey? Yeah, eighteen hundred hours. That was back in the day where Alberta had money, and uh, huh. it was also a not-for-profit, which helped. Yeah. But I was also into it. Like I just, I've, it's this is gonna sound. I know how this is gonna sound, but I felt like I'd done it before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I just knew it. I know, I just, and a, a lot of people will roll their eyes. Yeah. But, but I, those who know it, we get it. Yeah. Yeah. Get it. Honestly, same experience. I, the first time I heard Sanskrit, I was like, yeah. "Oh!" And it just clicked, and then the names yeah. just were in there. Weirdest yeah. thing. I know, right? Yeah, exactly. Anyway, so yeah, so my uh, so my uh, my voice started coming back. So I started experimenting with this. I also had asthma, and one of the teachers, a uh, lovely lady named Violet Walton, who was my uh, teacher trainer at the time, she. Mm-hmm had had asthma, and so she was into working with people with asthma, specifically with yoga. Hmm. And over those two years, I got about 60% of my voice back. And in the meantime, I got really into breath as well. And I thought, man, what will happen if I do this pose with this sound? Because then my singer came out, yeah? So I'm going to try this. No, that vowel doesn't quite feel right. I'm going to try this vowel. And I just... I just kept playing. I just kept playing in the sandbox. And now all of a sudden it's called the Wilson method. You know, it just, uh, I found that as I was helping myself, people started knocking on the door. You know how this works. Mm -hmm. And uh, they wanted some help too. And so one student at a time, and now I'm teaching it at a couple of universities and traveling around. And it's so much fun because it came from a place of of of, um my own personal needs to learn uh at a place of fun Mm -hmm. hopefully that's uh, that's still there yeah it's you know it's interesting because it it, it, what you're describing to me just sounds like sharing Mm -hmm. which is again people will roll their eyes you know but like this is this is it's the it's the true i think the truest form of teaching you discover something really awesome and you're like, um, gotta hey, share it. yeah. Do you, yeah. Do you guys want to check this out? This is really, really yeah. cool. Very different from, from, uh, like re- reading in a book and, and teaching it from, from up here. It's yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's personal and it's sharing. You're, you're bang on there. That's yeah. how it feels. 
So why is it that when we start to learn more about something, it kind of takes the love out of it or takes the joy a little bit? I found this happens with yoga all the time as people, they love it. They just love it. And they start teaching it and getting deeper into it. And all of a sudden it turns into something else. Yeah. You know, to me, I think we just talked about it. To me, it's it's when we get in our head too much. It's when we start using that frontal lobe as opposed to our our, uh, our heart and our solar plexus and the back of our brain. Yeah. You know, you know it's I, if it's still fun and it's still exploratory and it's still, like you said, hey, hey, folks, come over here. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Um, even when it does become more um, more standardized, if you're still learning, it won't be dry to me. Mm -hmm. It's when we start thinking about it too much and forget why we're doing it. Yeah. I got to hook you up with Mark Walsh. He's organized um, this thing called the Embodiment Conference. And it's, that. it's like yoga, martial arts, dance, like just so many different, uh, all people that are just into embodiment. And yeah. just talking to you now, I'm like, man, that's your whole jam. Yeah. It's like you your know, it breath seems, and your voice. It's it's live now, you know. It seems like our generation, if if we're to look back psychically in four thousand years, I feel like our generation is is integration. Mm -hmm. It's what we're doing. We're taking a lot of different therapies and going, oh, that there's a part I can I can meld that into something else. And yeah, it's like one of the guys I did my yoga teacher training program. He's a fabulous uh, dancer. And so he started working with uh, yoga and dance. And so he was over in his corner doing his thing. And I was in, over <laughs> in my corner doing yoga and voice. And it was, it was so much fun. It's yeah. a creative process. Yeah. So you got one day here in Regina. Uh, we're on, we're on hey, Sunday. Yeah. This coming Sunday. Yeah. This coming Sunday. Nine, uh, nine to four, I think, is, uh, is the big. So other jerk. than uh, a deep, fully integrative healing transformative experience that people will carry with them for years and years and years years and years <laughs> what can people expect you know like this is it, it, suppose i know nothing like zero yeah. and i'm like wilson method breathing yeah. voice yeah. yoga why? movement I do that why i don't get it why should i mean i know nothing what 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 yeah. is this thing well the, the way the way I usually approach it is that uh, life life tends to make us hold our breath. Uh, that's just the way it is, and so we talk a bit about that. And when life life makes us hold our breath, we we start messing up a few systems in our body, and that can lead to things like uh, uh, reduced immune system health, asthma, uh, anxiety. I work a lot with uh, kids with anxiety. I work a lot with people who have lost their voice. I work a lot with asthmatics. Uh, I work a lot with people who uh, feel like they've lost their creative spark. Uh, COPD, um, acid reflux, snoring. You know, it's, it's a thing that a lot of us yoga teachers work with. Mm -hmm. uh, and my approach is all those things but you're using your, we all know that breathing can be powerful on its own. We all know that voice can be powerful on its own. We all know that yoga and movement can be powerful on its own. We start to put these together and it turns into something pretty magical. So as far as that little litany of, uh, of challenges we're working with, that's one way to work with it. Uh, right. Look at it. Um, I mean, what we're going to expect, we're going to be, we're going to be doing some rolling around on the floor. Yes. Uh, uh, um, we're going to be doing a little bit of vocalizing, not necessarily singing. You don't have to be a singer at all. Mm -hmm. We all use our voice. We use our voice to talk to our friends, to our family, to our loved ones. Uh, sometimes, uh, we might be using our voice at conferences. That would be a reason to come as well. Public mm -hmm. speaking. Yep. Uh, and if you've ever had any questions about, you know, I'm, I'm feeling kind of kind of low on energy. I'm feeling like uh, my limbs don't work like they used to. Uh, doctors telling me I need an inhaler. You know, come and come and check it out. You know, a lot of that stuff we're going to yeah. talk about and do stuff about. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I'll tell you. Maybe I'll just give like a quick little testimonial here. Oh, um, nice. I I was I in can spell testimonial, so you go. <laughs> I was in a punk rock band uh, yeah, for sure. about five years, uh, and I screamed as the lead as a lead singer, and I just screamed. We toured Canada, and I would just throttle my voice night after night. I loved it. I had so much fun. Yeah. But I damaged my vocal cords, I thought, permanently. So once or twice a year, when I was teaching a lot, I'd just lose my voice. It would, just, it would start to get yeah. hoarse, and then it would be gone. Yeah. And this happened to me for, I swear, 10 years? Long yeah. time. Yeah. Um, met you. Did some of the Wilson method? I I took I don't know how many times now, maybe like four or five different workshops with you. Um, I haven't lost my voice since. And the, here's I think the really the really interesting thing is it's not like I I I went to your workshops and I was like okay now I have a new practice that I'm going to get up in the morning and do my Wilson method breathing. That's not what I was doing. I just picked up some new stuff. Yeah, I picked up some new stuff. A lot of it I integrated. Um, yeah. People out there, if you're listening and you take classes from me, I guarantee you have done some of this stuff before. Like I guarantee you have because it's it's a little bit like it becomes so much of me. <coughs> I've I've integrated it so much that yes. it starts to just come out. In, and that it's yours, of course. Yeah, and. Yeah, I mean, well, if so, I if I got nothing but that relief from losing my voice, if I got and I got yeah. more than that, if I got nothing but that, I'd be like, "That's money in the bank." Like, forget yeah. about it. That's such an easy call. It's so easy. Yeah, I would do that workshop. So much of this, so much of what we're doing on Sunday is very intuitive to the body. In a way, I'm not teaching. I'm not teaching anything that the body or the back of the brain doesn't know. It's just that life, uh, you know, it's not our fault. Life makes us hold our breath. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, uh, things start not working as well. So in a way, it's like we're getting back to how we breathed and vocalized when we were kids, right? When we were playing in the sandbox and just let rip. Yeah, so simpler. It's, it's natural. It's not, that's, uh, yeah, and I love how you put that. It's not like it's a, <laughs> like this new, like, uh, very heady technique that you have to, like the whole point of this method is that you play with it for a little while and then it morphs into something else that's about you, not yeah. me. So I love it. Yeah. 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 I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. Yeah. So just quick, we got a couple minutes left here. Yeah. What I want to do is a quick little rapid fire round with you where I am going to be the cynical, um, uh, doubting, I'm the doubting Thomas. I'm the like, <laughs> I'm the I'm that punk rock guy that's like you know yep. what yoga's stupid. <laughs> I will do my best. Yeah. So hopefully when I'm just sort of like uh, improving some criticisms and reasons why I wouldn't go, uh, hopefully some of you out there listening will be like, oh, damn, that's actually why I that's wouldn't exactly go. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So yeah, first off, I don't have any problems with my breathing. I'm fine. Why would I do this? I'm I'm good. Do you uh, do you do uh, do you do any talking to uh, people ever? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you know what happens. You know, the honest truth is, a lot of this is noticing. It's noticing work, mm -hmm. and a lot of us, when we get used to breathing a certain way, we don't notice that we're actually not breathing as well as we could. Right. Uh, and it takes it takes a little bit of time, and then all of a sudden we're breathing at like three times the capacity we were, and we notice, wow! Like when I wake up in the morning, I got twice the energy, hmm. right? Um, but yeah, I totally get it. It it seems like breathing. Well, I'm alive, aren't I? Yeah. So of course I must be breathing well. Mm -hmm. Also, it depends on the age. Often we we breathe in a way that we're gonna no, not gonna notice that anything's going on until we're you know in our thirties or forties, and then it starts to catch up with us. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, just just come and check it out and breathe a little bit differently, and we'll kind of play and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you a hug. <laughs> Speaking of that, um, yoga is for lightweights. Like it's just not. I lift, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I lift. Yeah, that. So, yeah, have, bro. Uh, so I'm there's not... this thing called power yoga where you have to lift your body. <laughs> uh, 
and your body is really heavy. And uh, the power yoga, uh, it's being used now in, uh, there's hockey players that use it, there are football players that use it, and it's basically, it's, it gives you the same workout and exercise as a workout exercise regimen, but you're doing it without weights, and you're doing it with just yourself and your body and your awareness, and the bonus is without the weights, we learn stuff about our body that we might not otherwise learn mm -hmm. so you can get the same workout and uh and you will at times in this workshop i guarantee it nice but it won't feel like work mm -hmm. which is kind of cool like we're actually going to do core work but it's not the same core work as uh, as how we might think of core work which is a lot of sweating and swearing and yeah. and hard work and I tightening gotta, like, stuff right am i gonna be like just blasting some crunches you know uh, I mean? Just no, like... you will not. But you will get as good an effect as if you did. <laughs> Damn. Off the work. <laughs> okay, last last one. Um, yeah. What bring about um, I? Bring, uh, voice. Bring I, it up with voice. I was I I I used to sing. Yeah. I loved it actually. Yeah. I re I remember singing, and. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what happened, but along the way, I guess I just had a couple people maybe that made fun of me or I was just singing and I listened to myself sing. There was a recording and I was like, oh, I actually just suck. Like, I don't like the sound of my own voice. I don't yeah. want to go and for a whole day have to listen yeah. to the sound of my own voice. That sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. You know what? There is no such thing as a vocal problem. There's no such thing as a vocal problem. Uh, everybody is born being able to sing. You know Society. how you know. Do you know how many people disagree with you right now? Oh, I heard it. Yeah. I heard it over the interwires. Yeah, <laughs> but what that is, what that is, is societal conditioning. Uh, someone tells us to shush in grade two. Uh, we have the biggest voice in grade four choir, and the teacher just in a fit of just trying to make things work, says, could you just mouth the words? Uh, someone makes fun of us as we're singing. They go by. None of that has anything to do with our voice. That has to do with our perception of our voice. Hmm. So, I mean, I've had plenty. I think, I've, I think I'm up to 12 now tone-deaf people who aren't tone-deaf. Huh. Like matching pitch, no problem. Takes a few months. Mm -hmm. But what I mean by there's no such thing as a voice problem is... What there is, is breathing, doubt, or support and air issues, where we're tightening up. And of course, if I tighten my body because I'm worried about how I'm going to sound, uh, I'm not going to sound great, huh. right? So what I'm here to do is to prove to you that if you've got a vocal problem of any kind, I can help you with it. Um, voice is one of the most, actually it probably is the most, intimate expression of who we are that's why we get scared about it mm -hmm. that's why it starts to turn into uh something that just raises our hackles and tells us no right because we're we're going to be judged you can take a trumpet back to the store and buy a better one you can't do that with your voice it's it's who you are so sometimes we get too much into our sinuses Sometimes we get way back into our throat. Sometimes we tighten up. But in the end, it's about relaxing muscles, getting resonance going, getting air going. Then all of a sudden, doop, oh, I love my voice again. And uh, people people are really happy when that happens. And, uh, you know, the McDonald's sign, right? I'm not quite at, you know, 100 million served, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's getting there. A lot, of, a lot of people come in and say, I can't sing, or I shouldn't sing, or uh, like a lot of folk artists, I'm losing my voice in the in the set. Hmm. Uh, um, pop artists, heavy metal, you know, trying to sing those high notes. And you work with this method, and you get freer, and all of a sudden, huh, it's always there. Yeah. That ability to sing is always there. It's just how many layers we've covered it up. I just love that idea that there's no there's no voice problem 
It's a yeah. social problem. Because yeah. I immediately was like, yeah, of course, in the same way there's no body problem. Yeah. There's exactly. no body problem. Your body's great. It's a social problem. Yeah. Somebody exactly. was a dick. That's what happened. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, our, the the vocal folds are just a couple of little curtains opening and closing. They're 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 innocent in this whole <laughs> whole drama, right? They're, they get they take the blame for it. We can't hit that high note. Then we decide we can't hit that hit that high note. Hmm. Then we decide we're not a good singer, and then it's a self fulfilling prophecy. But you get that breathing going, you get that core moving, and all of a sudden, wow. Yeah. I can sing. Right. Preach, brother. Yeah, you betcha. Yeah, I am with you, you 100% on that. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap it up. Yeah. That was a good note. That was a strong note to finish on. That was, we had fists, uh, raised fists of glory and joy and yoga in the air. So, that's how you know. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So, uh, I look forward to this. I really am. Yeah. www.bodhitreeyoga.com. Um, really quick, it's a couple clicks. Uh, get yourself registered in this and, um, I um, I hesitate to say stuff like this in the event that somebody does take it and is not totally thrilled. So I hesitate to say stuff like this. I'm going to say it. You will not be disappointed. Like I guarantee you will laugh. You will get you will get some kind of like a you will have a thing. Yeah. There will like be a thing. thing. There's always a thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's gotcha. <laughs> good. I'm looking forward to the to the thing, to all the things. <laughs> yeah, I'm also looking to hanging out. We're going to hang out a bit. We are going to hang out. Yeah, don't nap too much. So, yeah, no, a short little nap and after a drive uh, from Saskatoon, and then yeah. I'm all yours. We're going to party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, looking forward to it. Have a great night tonight. And, all right. Uh, thank you for watching, everybody. And uh, we'll, see you. we'll see you all Sunday. Yeah, for real. Bodhi Talk Live will be back. I know we're on a break. Season 2 is coming up. So don't miss out on that, y'all.